represent French Canadian Malice. Where my French colleagues here are from France, I'm actually Canadian born. Uh, one of the big differences for being in the Malice is I carry a 20 gauge smooth bore. Everyone here has shown their bayonets that fit on the end of their musket. I don't have one of those. So when those fellows with those bayonets come at me, I run. <laughs> As, my gear is quite similar to everyone else's, however, I might be wearing, this is called a capot, a blanket coat. My blanket coat is a bluish gray, someone else may have a brown. Each parish had purchased wool. So the parish down the road might have purchased all white, another one might have purple. So you can actually distinguish different units of the Malice by the color of wool they're wearing. I carry more knives. I carry a neck knife, a belt knife, carry one down my moccasins or my belts, and we also carry a tomahawk. We do more raids. We would travel with our native allies and come out from Fort Duquesne, Pittsburgh, and we would burn homesteads. And from Fort Duquesne, we would come out from all the way out as far as this region, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania had several raids. We do not fight in line in combat like the rest of these fellas. We are in small groups and we're a raiding party. When we were put into mainline combat, we did not hold up. We're not trained for that. Native allies can go next. Thanks, Bill. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Burning Sticks. I'm dressed like your typical Eastern Woodland Native American or American Indian. I go. I really don't care what you use. Um, we're starting off with my clothes. I'm going to do the clothes really quick. Uh, on my feet, I have moccasins made in deerskin leather. I have leggings made of wool, a breech cloth, loincloth or breech cloth. I have a European style shirt, and I have what's called a match coat. My armaments include a club or tomahawk. I don't have it with me right now, so I'm really vastly unprepared for this raid. Um, but I also have a musket. Some people ask me why I don't have a bow and arrow. Well, it's the 1750s, and by this time, most Eastern Woodland nations within the sphere of influence of European powers, like the British or the French, had muskets. We prize these a lot more. I also have my scalping knife. This is a French style one. You can probably tell I'm maybe more French allied. Now, there, we call it a French and Indian War because the, most of the Indian tribes allied with Les Francais, the French, um, but there were a variety of nations involved here. Um, I'm sure all of y'all heard the Iroquois League in upstate New York who actually projected power across uh, western Pennsylvania. Um, they were the ones that sided with the British. Other tribes that sided with the British were the Mohicans um, and down south the Cherokee. Um, being a French allied Indian, I would have probably been Shawnee, Lenape, Mingo, which is native of this area. I could be even as far away as the Western Great Lakes, like the Ojibwe, the Ottawa, the Potawatomi. I probably traveled very far to Fort Duquesne in modern day Pittsburgh to participate in fighting here. Other decorations. Now to the typical European eye, Indians were a gaudy, tacky people. I'm wearing all these bright colors. I got all this quill work. I got silver hanging in my ears and my nose. I'm tattooed. I have all this, whatever this is to you, I'll probably hang it in my hair, right? This right here is called a roach. And behind this one right here that I'm holding is like a hair drop. So we were very decorative. We look, Indians had a material culture with lots of bright colors. We like painting our faces. We like putting feathers in our hair. We like wearing silver and beads and all that stuff, putting silk on our clothes. Now, another piece of important equipment that an Indian carried was a mirror. Now, the purpose of a mirror was... No, actually, it was to paint my face. <laughs> yeah, because because we love mirrors. We were finally able to like look at ourselves and paint ourselves now. So a lot of the a lot of documentation showed that Indians carried mirrors, and that was to do our hair and put silver in our ears and paint our faces. Yes, we were very vain people. We did a lot more stuff than the women did. I'm also falling apart because these cheap European goods I'm getting. <laughs> It must be an English one. <laughs> now, people always ask me why I'm not wearing a lot of leather. 
simple because have you guys ever tried to dress deer skin before? It takes a lot of work. Why would I want to do that when I can get nice, beautiful wool, right? It comes in blues and greens and reds. I can decorate it with ribbons and beads. They actually shed water better than leather because leather absorbs water. So, and have you guys ever tried wearing a leather loincloth? <laughs> it's not comfortable. I prefer the wool ones. They actually keep me warmer in the winter and cooler in the summer, actually. So they work a lot better than leather. The only thing leather would probably be my moccasins. And if I was in a poor nation that wasn't getting enough trade, maybe my leggings. Cursed English gear. Ugh. But yet, what, I'm, what I am is a typical uh, Eastern Woodland Indian from a, a variety of nations could look like this. As far north as from Nova Scotia, Canada, as far south as Florida, to as far west as to the Mississippi River, from the Great Lakes all the way down to Alabama and Georgia and all that. But this is a typical Eastern Woodland style. My hair is in a scalp lock. Sorry, my brain stopped for a second. I have a scalp lock hairstyle. This is decorating. Have you guys noticed how decorated it is? It's to make the enemy look at me and be like, I want that. To tease him. <laughs> because I'm a very high priced target now. I also have tattooing. Tattooing has a very complicated bit of uh, reasoning behind it. Beautification, sometimes reasons were put behind it. Some uh, natives had animals tattooed on them, either for a form of clan membership or to what we call manitos or spiritual manifestations. So if I wanted to be faster, because you can probably tell I'm not probably not that fast, I'd probably get a deer tattooed on me so I can get faster, right? <laughs> Right now I just have simple triangles and lines. These are more decorative. I have another one on my other arm here. Get my match coat can get out of the way. As you can see, I also have a two-armed cross tattooed on me as well. A little bit more, another sign that I'm probably more French allied right here. But the French brought this symbol over. The Indians actually already had a symbol for this. We called it the dragonfly. Uh, also, tattoos had to be earned in some way, shapes, or forms, like killing an enemy. You'd get a tattoo for it. Most of the warriors were actually very heavily tattooed people. Uh, a Frenchman with, with a tribe living in modern-day Arkansas said that a one time a young man tattooed a hatchet on him, on his thigh, I believe. It's supposed to be a sign that he killed somebody. You know what the problem with that was? He didn't actually kill anybody. So when, people, when the elders found out, they told him to take a rock and rub that skin until that tattoo comes off because you didn't earn that tattoo yet. So tattoos are a form of beautification, also a sign of status to show your accomplishments. But yeah, we also fight, I'm fighting for the French. Um, like I just explained before, a lot of the Indians sided with, diff with either the British or the French. Sometimes they wanted to stay neutral, but they couldn't. But um, I'm allied with the French because the French really don't have much designs on my land. 